<laughs> Hello, all you beautiful people. You're tuned into the Jake Frost Life Log series. It's a series of pictures and videos that I put on the internet for no apparent reason because one day I started making them and I have no ability to now stop. Rather than self flatulate for 18 minutes and some odd seconds, I've decided to fill this Life Log series with random thoughts that come into my head. <laughs> like this one. How about instead of having a corn maze, we have a permaculture berry maze? That way, when you're going through the maze, you can just pick your own berries and blueberries and apples and things like that and you know what anyways screw corn mazes because there's plenty of corn subsidies and all that crap anyways so how about a permaculture food maze and you're getting lost and you're going apple picking with your date and also you're in a maze and you know if you get lost and you can't find your way out uh, you won't starve to death because it's made of food okay this is an idea invention that uh, it's basically like a box that can stand somewhere in a public area and helps you buy, trade, and sell things without actually having to be present. So yes, I understand it's basically sounds like something for selling drugs, but essentially what it is is like you go to this box and then you text somebody, hey, I'm at the box, what's the code? And the code changes like every minute or something and then they enter the code in the box and then opens up and whatever's in there they can have and there can be like multiple slots so um, you know they enter the code and then it like moves like a vending machine to the right one and then it gives you whatever you want but this like totally would eliminate um, people's need to having to meet and uh, actually be in the presence of people in order to buy and trade and sell things and basically it came out of like the idea of uh, they have Craigslist safe spaces in some cities so basically you go to this space and you're like nobody's gonna hassle you like cops won't hassle you if you're buying and trading and selling things there and I don't know what else it is maybe there's like a loading dock so it's like easy for people to to do Craigslist transactions there but also it comes from this idea that my friend had and I live on Big Island and basically um, he wanted to get a bunch of futons because he noticed there aren't enough futons around here and everybody's like got small houses and they've got small amounts of space so they want like futons but there's not enough futons so he says okay I'm gonna look it up and he looks up to trying to like get an industrial amount of futons and then it turns out you can't do that because you have to have a, um, a shipping or um, you know industrial futon license like you can't just get um, 90 futons in a shipping container and bring them over here without this like expensive special shipping license so then he was like dude how are they gonna know I just don't like want personally for myself want 90 futons you know maybe I really like futons but then it's like well okay we got to get around that somehow you know if somebody sees that I'm selling 90 futons on Craigslist then I'm gonna get in trouble so what he basically needed was my invention you know it's not just for selling drugs it's actually a, a legitimate invention for people to save time and money and you know so that people would go to the shipping container they enter the code that he texts them or or um, you know they enter the put the money in there and then the door opens and then they can take a futon and, you know it could be sectioned off so that um, he, they can only get one futon or there could be a video camera so that you can see what the person's doing in there this is just one quick idea about, um, in my town, there's all this uh, chemical spraying along the outsides of the roads that like the state does so that weeds and the jungle won't grow onto the roads. And yeah, it's pretty messed up. Like the chemicals they use have been shown to like make birth defects and stuff like that. But, uh, and I don't agree with it. I don't want it. I don't think they should be spraying poison all over the place. But my, my question is, and my idea is, what is the alternative? Like, can you imagine um, if there are 12,000 weed whackers, like men using weed whackers, up and down the roads 24-7. And yeah, I know that like maybe these uh, chemicals could be linked to, um, you know, causing lots of problems in the environment. But what kind of cost would it be to the environment of 12,000 extra weed whacking people every day up and down the road? I don't know. Uh, attention! Do you or anybody you know own a salt company? If you do, I have an idea for you. How about you make a salt flavoring called End of the Bag of Chips, or a salt flavoring called End of the Can of Honey Roasted Peanuts. 
because that is the salt that I will just pinch and eat and put in my mouth. It's delicious. But my next question is, when did they start making salt flavorings? Because salt, it's like already a flavor. But, you know, hey, if you're, if you're doing it, might as well make this one. End of the bag of chips and end of the jar of honey roasted peanuts. There's this thing that's been kind of annoying me lately uh, about zombie movies. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the genre, not necessarily the survival horror aspect, but the just the survival aspect. And if it's if it's pleasurable, then it doesn't have to be horror. If it's horror, then you know it's horror. But you know, uh, if you ever saw Dawn of the Dead, the 2001 remake, or even the the original. There are a lot of aspects in that movie that they were really having a lot of fun, you know? They could just go about this mall and have a blast, and it wasn't necessarily all horrific. But the thing that's been pissing me off is uh, whenever I try to talk to people about zombie movies, they kind of write it off because they read some kind of article online that says, Oh, the prevalence of zombie movies is because of society's interest in... I don't know, that's when I start tuning out and stop listening. But, I mean, honestly, the genre is being hurt by, like, all these people saying that the that zombie movies are this, or zombie movies are that, or that's why they're so prevalent. They're not that prevalent. In the last, like, five to ten years, we really haven't had uh, uh, that many stellar, stellar zombie movies. And I mean, yeah, okay, I don't follow the media very much, and I don't know all the movies that have come out, but, you know, I keep, I keep a pretty good eye out, and I haven't seen that many stellar zombie movies. It's always like, oh, now they're combining... Uh, you know, the girlfriend is an intelligent zombie, and it's a romantic comedy zombie movie, or it's a, a, a drama zombie movie, or, you know, like, stuff like that. I did like Quarantine, and besides it being, like, a really slow, dramatic show, I like The Walking Dead, and, you know, there are a handful that I really like, but it's like, as soon as I start talking to people about zombie movies, they write it off, like, like everybody read some article online that was like, zombie movies there were uh, americans fascination with zombie movies is because of this or that well you know what in the future when they look back at, on our generation zombie movies they're going to be like wow these guys really didn't pre uh, push the genre that far forward they kind of just like tried to do all these spin-off genres and you know so you know please don't talk down about why people may or may not be interested in the genre and uh, if you're a zombie filmmaker you know keep doing good work and stay hardcore I only recently started uh, using Pandora I know I know it's been a long time I don't know why I didn't have it for so long but uh, I was thinking they could have a lot more fun with it if they did like some more creative ideas with the playlists like, for example, um, what if there was one where you, you pick a genre or a song that you like, and then, like, very slowly over um, an amount of time, they take that song to a similar song to a similar song to a similar song, and every time, but it's a little bit less similar until it's a song that's completely opposite, but that you still may possibly like. So you could start out with, like, a, a country song, and then it goes to, like, um... Or a, an emo like a uh, boy band song where you could start out with a rap song and then it takes you to like a classical song or you could start out with like a, a fusion jazz and then it takes you to um, you know like a talking uh, something I don't know you know the the, I, the possibilities are endless but I think it would be really kind of fun to see um, especially to, to find new music to see uh, how far it could take you from what you originally picked to what you didn't like and then if you click down like you know you say up oh, that that jump was from that song to that song was too much you know that that made me fall out of it but up until here those songs were really similar and I was digging them and I, I don't know I think they could have a lot of fun with uh, different uh, algorithms and stuff so this is another idea that I've actually been working on um, but before I start saying talking about it, I have to explain LARPing. If you don't know what LARPing is, I'm kind of a big advocate for it, uh, even though I haven't played in years. But basically what LARPing is, is live action role playing. And yeah, there is another like stream of movies that came out all kind of making fun of LARPing. And it's really a travesty that it got this kind of image in the press as like this nerdy kind of... Um, 
loser-ish game. But yes, basically what everyone describes it as is fighting each other with foam swords. But they don't really explain that they're ultralight carbon fiber uh, swords made out of like golf club cores or carbon fiber with like kite tape and they're like super advanced. It's more like a fencing a fencing saber or whatever because they're so light and um, basically there's this whole architecture of like role-playing games that's like put over this usually medieval uh, atmosphere and and the thing is people don't really understand is that role-playing is like a psychological thing so yeah from the outside you can be like oh they're f idiots with foam swords but like if you were in there and you're getting into it it can really kind of like take control of your mind even in a more uh, dynamic way than uh, a video game can because you know and look at jocks and everyone like all everyone is every like genre of people are into uh, video games but the video games are so limited in reality like you can only do so much you can only do what the programmers put in there for you but LARPing it's basically like a set of rules that goes over an existing world that basically enables you to do like uh, any varied and picturesque amount of uh, interesting um, events can take place that aren't just scripted by uh, numbers on a computer and so that's why I'm a really big advocate for it it's a really fun thing if you've never tried it then I definitely suggest you go to like a big cool popular LARP wherever's near you I used to go to uh, Nero Mass um, Massachusetts called uh, Ravenholt events and it was oh man it was so fun uh, not only is it like extremely can be extremely physical and active and like you can be stealthy or warrior ish or um, you know all those kind of like physical aspects that can really get your body moving and um, really cool combat and interesting techniques and but there's all this whole social uh, part o over it too like there's espionage and um, high-ranking officials and uh, government courts and imperial guards and you know magic and voodoo and mythology and all the stuff that goes over it but essentially what my idea is I'm trying to get to here is that I'm trying to get it going on the big island of Hawaii um, and I need help like this is something that I can't just do all by myself I really uh, just kind of have this idea and what I've done so far is I have these domain names BigIslandLARP.com and uh, HawaiiLARP.com and I've started amassing a small arsenal so I have a bunch of golf club cores, a bunch of insulationing and tape and um, all the know-how how to make these weapons so basically in the future what I'm gonna do and if anyone wants to give me a hand with this I would really appreciate it if they're interested in it I'm just looking for the right person to kinda hand this project over because I I actually wanna play is uh, I'm basically wanna start like a Kickstarter and then if people are interested then uh, you know we can really get something going here get like a storage shed or a trailer with all the LARPing materials all piled in there for the NPCs non-player characters and the staff and the plot people and have some we can we should be able to actually pay people who are working on this but uh, essentially it can be like something that actually works into the culture here already because that's what a lot of people have been kind of telling me was their criticism is it's like dude peep that's a mainland thing people don't really do that in Hawaii well first of all uh, first of all actually there is a LARP going on in Hilo but it's extremely small it's just kind of like some people getting together in a park and hitting each other with swords and there I believe there are some on the other islands but uh, I think it really could go off here with all the kind of um, hippie festival culture and the alternative culture and uh, you know all these kind of people and the health culture you know the the outdoor activities culture um and, and you know it's a, it's, it's a lot better than playing a video game inside but still probably fulfills that uh gaming need that a lot of or want that a lot of people have for entertainment but i also think it could really fit into the culture because um you know there are a lot of really cool big uh, places you could play here, like um, places with fields and bunk houses and well, like woods and shade and fields and, and um, ponds and you know 
gardens and beautiful landscapes and stuff. And that's really the ideal place to play a LARP. So I think, you know, you could offer these places, hey, we'll come through, um, you know, a day before the event goes off, we'll help you, you know, clear out any junk that people could be tripping over, help you kind of clean up your space and get it all ready. Um, the players all throw dish in some money. So, um, say an event goes from Thursday to Sunday and it's $300, then you, you get to, uh, for your $300, not only do you get the event and all this stuff that goes down, you also get uh, fed for all three days. And that could really help out the kind of like gardening and uh, food community here. So it's like you're going to get fed local organic foods and you're going to get um, like a real experience where you can um, go and have a fun time, you know. So I think that, yeah, it might not actually work here, but I just want to try. I want to put the feelers out there. So if any of my friends or anyone on the internet is uh, interested in helping me get uh, hawaiilarp.com going or bigislandlarp.com going or helping me kind of make the weapons or anything like that, you know, email me and um, I'd love to talk about it with you. Okay, so that pretty much sums up all the ideas I wanted to put down this time. Um, it always seems like I have a lot more ideas that I've written down than I do. But uh, that's always because the best ideas I think to myself, Oh, I don't need to write that down. It's such a good idea. I'll never forget it. And then, of course, I forget it. As uh, fellow ideas people probably already know. Uh, but here's another idea. Doing the housekeeping for your videos at the end of your YouTube videos. But uh, basically... This is the new format that I think I like and I'm going to roll with. Again, I just make these videos uh, for my own self, so if you watch them, then I really appreciate it. But uh, I know there's like way too much stuff to look at. That's why I've been uh, starting to upload all the individual videos uh, onto another YouTube channel. So all you have to do is click one of those videos on here and then it will take you to another channel and you can watch the full res version of that uh, slowly if you like because that was a criticism I got from somebody else they're like I want to see everything on there but I can't and you're losing a lot of resolution and I was like yep good point okay so now I have um, it should be pretty soon you'll be able to click on those videos the videos on this life log and it'll go over to another channel and you'll be able to watch them and just uh, having ideas rather than just me kind of babbling about. But on a personal note, you know, life once again has has been really good. It's weird to say, but I think I could die now and I would have had a very satisfying and happy life. Um, everything has been going really great. Uh, awesome challenges, awesome friends and company. And, you know, I, I really can't complain living in Hawaii and getting to do what I love every day so um, tell me what you think uh, I understand that a lot of people probably just either listen to or just watch these videos perfectly cool you know I make them for myself so um, tell me what you think of the videos and my new format and everything and uh, have a great life Aloha